Don't mind the bell. That's the kit in winter. What's up everybody, it's Wapja, and this video is a follow-up video to my build concept I did a couple days ago of this uh, Crit Assassin Poison Voltaxic Trapper. Before I get into this, I wanted I want to have this little disclaimer out there, but pretty much as I saw it, this was just something that I've been thinking of um, because I really like the whole idea behind trappers and and I really enjoy Voltaxic as a unique, as I mentioned in that video. Someone in the comments did point out that another player did something similar to this in Parandis. So I'm definitely giving that player credit for doing that because it was really cool. Because honestly, I've actually kind of transitioned more over to something similar to what that player did. And I still think that Crit Poison Assassin can work for Voltaxic Lightning uh, Trap, but uh, there's there's things I'm going to be talking about in this video to talk about exactly why I'm not going to be doing that now, and I potentially see that, or I see that being something that you would transition to uh, once you are well established in the league, once you're you know 95 plus, at least 90 plus, because it is very point starved. But but for now, let's just talk about my original build idea. Uh, so as I was going through it, um, you know using the assassin ascendancies i wanted to get the double damage from uh from poison that's caused from crits that was the whole idea of it i actually figured out a way to achieve crit cap with uh theoretically of course with with lightning trap the problem is you need a lot of very specific gear to achieve this you need a corrupted plus one maximum power charge voltaxic you need a six link with increased critical strike chance and between those two things uh you know that's that's kind of like really hard to pull off and one of the things i really want out of this build is i want a build that could clear maps relatively well you know i'm not i'm not the fastest player you know i'm no i'm no havoc i'm no big chicken I'm I'm not like speed running these these maps super crazy fast and I don't care to. That's the other thing. Like I honestly I get little value out of playing like that. Not to knock the other people that do those things, but I don't. So a build that I want, I just want something that is very playable. It does content at a comfortable pace and and I think this really has the potential of doing that. But not only do I want that I also want whatever build I'm playing to really be able to do multiple uh, multiple styles of content. You know, aside from mapping, I would also like it to have some Aziri viability. And most everyone could argue that most builds you could turn into something that's Aziri viable. Uh, it just really depends on, you know, if you're in hardcore or if you're in a standard league. And honestly, that there's something to be said. That's a whole other discussion between the value of uh, hardcore and standard league. And I'm lean as a hardcore player. I'm leaning more and more towards actually just going over to standard and not caring because the game is kind of getting to that point. So if it's that easy, why not just go full YOLO? But that's a whole other topic. But back to the Voltaxic landing trap. Uh, crit just requires a lot of gear. Uh, a, a corrupted plus one maximum power charge. Uh, Voltaxic is is not that hard to do, but the problem is you want at least a five link on it or a six link because you kind of want to use two traps, especially if you're not going to have that much trap cooldown recovery. And you would only have the 30% that you get from the, uh, the passive tree. So yeah, that, that would just be expensive. Now again, I do think that it has potential of being something that you could jump to later on and much later on once you you're fully established and you know you have everything sorted out if you have a six link cost breeze and a six link or a five link six link corrupted voltaxic sure fantastic but it would be pretty hard to pull off and for that reason as I had mentioned someone had linked me a build of a gentleman doing this in the Prandus League and honestly, I, I looked at it and the concept was there 100%, but I think that there are a lot of areas for improvement in that build. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, talk about that now, obviously. Let's stop that, I even said that. First off, 
I think this has the potential of being a great League starter because Voltaxics are pretty easy to get. They're pretty common. We have multiple divination cards that will allow you to do this. And I don't see it as being a highly sought after item with all the recent changes to poison and everything. Uh, the other thing too is uh, a, a little bit about the Assassin Voltaxic real quick because it relates to this. The one problem that I kind of had with Assassin is that the ascendancies never really they kind of worked but they didn't work to their absolute fullest potential until you had all eight ascendancies and that's i don't really like the idea of having to rely on getting all your eight ascendancies i want the build to be extremely comfortable and playable out of six ascendancies and while you can't do that with assassin two of your ascendancies don't or Four of your ascendancy points will not matter regardless of how you put out your your uh, your passive tree for Voltaxic Lightning Trap. But the thing about Saboteur, though, is it does really aid that playability. Uh, Chain Reaction is extremely good with Cluster Trap, and everything else on there really aids Lightning Trap between between uh, chain reaction between all the cooldown recovery and that really makes a big difference to the playability of the build and that's something that i am seeking so every ascendancy passive that you get feels impactful to the build while it wouldn't for assassin and then on top of that the eighth or your uh, final ascendancy passives from uber uber lab you know, you're going to be going Chain Reaction, and then you're going to be going Born in the Shadows. So not only do you get maximum playability, but you get some really nice defenses with Blind. And Blind something that's a little underutilized. And I think something that has a lot of potential and is very good. The, uh, the version I'm doing now, higher life pool, it's easier to get, a little bit more life regen. And then the other thing that I'm doing now, and I'll go ahead and show you guys, is I am actually using four coded shrapnel jewels. And uh, the coded shrapnel jewels give you 25% chance to poison enemies on hit with traps and mines. So when you have four, you always poison. I don't know how worthwhile this is, to be completely honest with you. Like four, four jewel sockets for an extra, you know, what would be a gem slot. I don't, I don't know how I really feel about that quite yet, because that is quite a bit. Um, you know, it is completely feasible that maybe if these were just four, you know, full out damage jams with a bit of life and having pierce here, or not pierce, but poison here, maybe that would be better. Um, another thing that I'm kind of using right now, I'm using bear trap because I'm still trying to figure out my second trap situation. I would love a single target trap. Uh, but speaking of coded shrapnel, and what it does, how it gives you, when you use four, it gives you 100% chance to poison enemies that are hit by your traps and mines. This is the same concept that I was thinking of uh, with using a Cospreys, because a Cospreys, you know, says enemies that are cursed, you poison as well. So I still think that there's potential for Cospreys in this build. However, the problem that I see with it is just consistency in poisoning because I had done some testing with Cospreys and Asenoths just to, you know, try it out. What I was really hoping for was that whenever you would hit a target and with Asenoths, I was hoping that all that like interaction, all those roles would be, I hope I was hoping that the, 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 whatchamacallit, the vulnerability, not the vulnerability, but the temp chains from Asenoths would hit first, therefore poisoning the enemy. Uh, there's a little video, or I'm going to have some gameplay showing what I mean, but I was really hoping that was the case. So because of this, I'm a little concerned about you know, how consistently, consistently you're going to have curses on enemies for them to be poisoned. At least this way, I know that they're going to get poisoned. And of course, if I use a poison gem, I know they're going to be poisoned. But the other nice thing about this is if I use Coded Shrapnel, it doesn't just save me one gem slot. It saves me two, technically, on my second trap if I were to have one. So, But for Cospreys, um, I was concerned about the consistency of the curses being on the targets, therefore poisoning in general. 
Ideally, I want to throw one trap down, and as soon as the trap goes off, I want everything to be poisoned. So if I'm out of range and they're not, they're out of my blasphemy range, I would want you know some sort of like vulnerability on hit or temp chains on hit. I would I would want that to activate it, but it does not work like that. So we'll we'll see. That's something that I will also continue to test. Auras are something that I'm going to have to address. And I am having, as you can see, I have a mana pot here. I am having a little bit of mana issues currently. And it's not even so much with lightning trap, but it's more with bear trap. I might not be using bear trap, so it might not matter. But when it comes down to it, I, I would really like this to be much more uh, playable via the mana. It's not too bad with just using lightning trap. But with using the bear trap, it... I don't even have enough mana to throw all my bear traps in a row. Now there are a couple of ways you could uh, address this. The gentleman who actually did the build before uh, in Parandus, he used Eldritch Battery, but I don't like Eldritch Battery because you're acrobatics, you're not gonna have a lot of energy shield, and you essentially have less energy shield than you would mana. But you could argue you get another aura out of running all mana like or running Eldritch Battery, but I don't really think these four points are worth it. And on top of that, um, oh, I for, oh, he the, the guy also just uses Val Clarity, which I'm a huge fan of Val Clarity. Anyone who's seen my Shockwave Totem videos knows that I am a huge fan of Val Clarity. So it's I'm actually going to start using the Val Clarity as well as soon as I can. So here's the other thing. As I was doing this build, I want to talk about some things that I did to kind of adjust this build to what I what I feel like is uh, is a, a much better passive tree for the build, you know, because I'm not doing uh, I'm not doing Eldritch Battery, and actually I, I can't I'm not going to pull his up and really compare it, but I know that my passive tree is drastically different than his. So let me pull this up. I can't remember what video I said this in recently, but uh, I said I feel like a lot of players always they just they always they they do things based off of. Um, what they usually do and what they always do and I found a spot in this build which is something that people usually would do because I mean it's good especially it's, it's a, especially a good area while you're leveling but for this build I think it is not very good and you could probably already see but it's right here it's this written and blood wheel combined with growth and decay and saboteur now, Saboteur gives you a lot of damage it, at 14% per trap damage, or for trap damage and 30% here. If you were to just consider these two points as 22% per these two, right? But you also kind of have to consider the travel. So when you consider the travel, it's four points for 44 or 44 percent damage. You know, that's 11% damage. But then you also consider the fact that you can pick up growth and decay, which is 2% life regen and damage over time. But the truth be told, I don't actually like damage over time because damage over time only affects the poison side of your, uh, you know, of your poison build. It doesn't affect your initial hit and your initial hit also affects your poison. So that's why people say things like double dipping, like increased chaos damage right here, this point gives me 14% more chaos damage on the hit, and then it double dips into the poison, if I'm correct. I am pretty confident that is that is correct. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong, because it's the internet. But these points just aren't very good. Uh, you know, especially if you're not going crit and you're not coming through here, they're not really worth it. So I, I cut them out because it's it's quite a bit of points. You know, if, you, if you're looking at this build and and you're thinking, oh, how can I cut points? That gives you nine points right there. And the other thing too, is I was so close to other areas on the tree where I could get more life regen if I want. And being down here in Golem's Blood and Master of the Arena and Heart of the Oak, or Heart of Oak, Heart of the Oak is throwback. Diablo 2, what up? Now this passive tree uh, is 111 points, which after all your all your classes, or not your classes, all your uh, skill quests and after bandits, that is at actually at level 90, extremely achievable. You know, that's just what I consider to be extremely achievable. And and then the other thing with saboteurs, a lot of people would say this does have a little bit of uh, synergy with 
the saboteur passive with a saboteur ascendancy because of the way the 8% damage, increased damage for each trap works. Because you get one more trap, you're getting 1% you know, more increased damage. Or not 1%, you're getting 8% more increased damage. So even if you include that, we're still at 52%. It's just not nearly as good. If you do it per point, these are like the best trap nodes on the tree because they're 16% per point and they're right here and I'm already grabbing clever construction so I don't want to travel all that way for one additional trap when often I don't actually get all my maximum amount of traps pretty much right now like I said at, at level 90 you'd be at 186% increased maximum life we have five jewel sockets four of which being the coded shrapnel and as you level you could get more another jewel socket so you would have two jewel sockets with life and you could you could get a little bit more life on the passive tree and you'd probably get another frenzy charge and what else oh yeah and these two that's pretty much the update on the build you know it's going pretty good and i'm still working on it feedbacks uh welcome thank you guys for the feedback that you did give me in the other video because because of that i was actually able to put this together in a way that uh, I think makes a lot more sense and it achieves my goals uh, much easier because that's really what it all comes down to for builds, right? Like you just want to build that is easy to play that lets you do the content that you want with no stress of other things. But uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and leave you guys with that. Thanks for watching. If I miss something in this video, I apologize. But uh, yeah, we will... We will talk about that in future videos, especially if I do a build guide for this. So yeah, guys, thanks much. Have a good one. See you later.